Hey y'all, welcome to part four of my running shoe journey. So, where to begin? Well, after training almost exclusively in the Saucony Guide 4 and the ASICS, um, what is it? The GT2160, you can see reviews on both of them in parts two and three. After training in them, they obviously wore out, and I also had a pretty tragic incident in 10th grade cross country. It was not pretty, and what basically happened was I got bursitis. If you don't know what bursitis is, it's basically, okay, the bursa, which is on your hip, it's basically a lubricating, more or less like a pad to keep the bones from rubbing each other and, you know, causing irritation. Basically, my bursa burst and the bones were rubbing against each other, irritation was rampant, and I could barely run without limping. Okay, I, I limped when I walked. That's how bad it was. And basically, I went to the, um, I went to the doctors. They weren't sure how it might have originated, because they did say it is rare for a kid of my age to get. It's something older people get. But basically, I think it was brought upon by overtraining you know, training too hard, because going into the 10th grade cross-country season, I really wanted to push, and I went a little crazy with training. I would go to parks every day and run maybe like seven miles at race pace, which if you don't know, running race pace every day is not a smart thing to do. It will catch up with you, and it will wear you down. Nowadays, I fully realize what ideal pace I should be training at. Nowadays I only run at like, if I go for an eight mile run, I only run at like an 820 mile pace. Okay, when I was training for 10th grade cross country, I was going crazy. I was doing like seven minute mile pace for seven miles every day, no rest. Okay, it caught up to me, I got bursitis. And it, it effectively cut off any chance of success in my 10th grade cross country season. I did run an okay race, my first race, but after that, steady downhill spiral and very disappointing. Don't even like to think about it. What can I say? You live and you learn. And I was thinking, going in, well, training for 11th grade cross country, what can I do to put the injury behind me and progress? on the track that I should be. And obviously the most common answer, most common solution was cut down on the intensity over the summer. Yes, I'm already taking care of that as we speak. But one thing I hadn't thought of, and it slipped my mind, was to go for a lower heel. So I went to Flying Feet yet again and I asked for a pair of shoes. And I did kind of want to be on the more minimal side because that will obviously, over time, help with my running, my stride, everything. Everything comes down to your heel, believe it or not. And I did notice that my friend Kevin Moran had a pair of the ASIC um, Blur 33s. And basically, the 33 line is was a new line from ASICs. 33 stands for the number of bones in your feet, I believe. And that line is supposed to be not exactly true minimalist shoes, but more on the minimalist side. And I noticed with Kevin, his stride was improving with the blur. He was becoming a really solid runner. So I went to Flying Feet and I said, you know, maybe I want to try out a lower heel. Maybe the 33 line by Asics. And the guy was like, yes, but... As you probably know, you need a stability shoe. So the blur is not for you. You see, the blur is a neutral shoe. It's for basically, it doesn't really have anything special about it. But if you want a stability shoe, you gotta go for the Gel Neo 33s right here. So we brought it out. I did a little short test run outside the store. Felt good. But it really did feel different than anything I was used to. I mean, as you can see, I hope you can see this, but the bottom of this shoe 
It's almost a perfectly flat sole. You have no arch, nothing. It's flat. Um, and I wasn't used to that, obviously. I was coming off a very high heel, well, high for a running shoe anyway, which isn't that high in the grand scheme of things, but every millimeter counts in a running shoe. But anyway, I was coming off of higher heel running shoes, going down to basically not a true minimalist shoe, but this is a great um, transition shoe. So if you're one of those people who wants to work their way into the more minimalist shoes, this is a great shoe to go to because after running in these, maybe the first or second training runs, I mean, yes, these did feel slightly awkward. They did feel very flat, somewhat boxy. Um, I did notice with the lower heel, this shoe was encouraging me to land on my midfoot or forefoot. So instead of landing on my heel, I was down here or up here. Ideal. And obviously what midfoot or forefoot landing will do to you is it will gradually, um, well first of all it will pull the muscles in the back of your leg, make them stronger, it will strengthen your ankle, strengthen your basically your whole leg, and it will also increase, it will um, encourage better stride obviously. It will increase your stride cadence, so you'll take strides more often, which is actually ideal. All in all, it'll just improve your whole body as a runner. I was amazed. Like After the first maybe 100 miles on this shoe, I was amazed at the transition I went through. I could see great results in my running. Plus, the less of a heel you have, the less chance you, I guess you could say to an extent, the less chance you have of getting injured. Now I'm not saying to just jump until maybe like the five toe Vibram shoes and not expect injured. You gotta work your way into the lower heels. But this is a great shoe to go to, to gradually work your way. Because as you can see, there is still gel here. There's still a lot of cushioning. I mean, this whole yellow and black right here is cushioning. So it is a flatter shoe, but it's not exactly, you know, like bare bones, just basically a layer of rubber separating your foot from the ground. So the beginning of this summer, I've been running in them. Um, I selected the black and yellow. They also had some really funky colors. Like I think they had like a bright neon orange and black. They had some really weird colors. And it's also really nice because this is pretty much like a brushed suede right here. It's, it's really cool, but I was amazed at what this shoe did to my stride and just my running as a whole. I'd been able to safely increase my mileage from six miles a day, which is what I was running coming off of track season, um, to currently eight and a half miles a day. Obviously, I take one day off of the week, but um, which reminds me. As I mentioned, in 10th grade cross country, I had the bursitis and it was really bad and forgettable season. Following year in track, I did well. I mean, the bursitis went away, but I had hamstring problems. Currently, where I am in training right now, I don't really have any problems. The only issue I do have is with my left knee. I don't know exactly what it is, but it hurts if I bend down too much and I put too much force in the leg but all in all when I'm running I actually don't even notice it but I digress so yeah basically I would suggest to anyone to pick up this running shoe if you want to get more into the lower heel shoes and definitely if you're working way to um, a true minimalist shoe definitely take this as your transition shoe it will feel awkward your first couple runs but trust me once you get a good hundred miles in this shoe you will feel it's slight um, slightly loosen up, you'll break it in, and this is, will become really flexible. It basically, with these lines under here, you can see them, the grooves, it basically allows the shoe to sort of flow and go with your foot, run as close to barefoot as you can. So it's a very nice shoe, um, heartily recommend you getting it, and it's a great high mileage shoe, great cushioning for those many miles. Um, even, I'd say right now, currently I'm about, I've gotten like 250, 300 miles on these puppies. 
Uh, very minimal wearing and tearing, so that's nice as well. It's very a durable shoe, so I suggest getting it. I would give this an easy 5 out of 5. No faults with this one. And yeah, um, please like, comment, subscribe, whatever you want to your heart's content, and check out my final part coming up, part 5. Thanks. <music>